something really brief about them. So we, we have the pleasure of having from the Skyline University, Kamal Puri, the founding chairman, and he is actually one of the instigators in, in making sure that we were going to have this amazing webinar today. So I want to thank you so much. And from the Canadian University of Dubai, we have Dr. Ramiel Patu. Uh, I Just the name Canadian University obviously lights a little flame in my heart. So I want to thank you too. Canadian University of Dubai has been an amazing sponsor and friend as, as the Skyline University and College. And last but not least, we have uh, Navin Valrani. Thank you are from Arcadia. This is an amazing time for the having him as, as CEO there. I'm sure we have so many things to talk about today. We are going to put up a quick poll just for you to know who's, you know, who's here today. It helps our speakers uh, go ahead and talk and, and well, basically, you know, get the right direction of what's happening. And uh, so, here, uh, you know, about the webinar today, oh, there, there's the poll. Uh, gentlemen, you can actually answer this too. I hope everybody's doing really well today and uh, this is really important. We would like to know what industries you're from and, and, and actually I think number three, if that's my, my, uh, 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 was my answer for you guys. So I think that was pretty easy. <laughs> We like to make life easy, especially in the morning after after Dr. Kamal's already had his first coffee, so he's ahead of the game. Uh, so we're going to talk about, I think, many things today. We're going to talk about recruitment for September 2020, uh, the safety protocols on the campuses, support for Canadian students who are planning to study in Canada. Uh, we're also going to talk about dis digitalization, which is my cup of tea. So I think we could... Uh, oh, please, everyone, uh, go ahead and write your questions in the Q&A or in the chat box, and we will we'll bring it a right out to you so that you can, you know, we'll make sure that those questions get answered. If we don't have enough time to answer all the questions, we will make sure that you will be able to uh, get in touch with these amazing speakers. Uh, because they will give you the cor correct, uh, well, the correct information that we need to have. So, actually, oh, there you go. The poll is up. We have 100% people doing good today. I am so happy. Do you realize, from one, since we've been doing this way back in March, the numbers of how people are doing seem to increase all the time. And that makes me very happy. We have 86% from the education sector. So you've got a lot of colleagues and friends all trying to work on the same idea. And then we've got a little bit from every other sector, the other sectors a bit more. And uh, oh, some of you got on a little later. You didn't know we were having the 30% COVID-19 rebate at CBC Dubai, but now you know. So that's great to go. So let's just start. I think, like, can I start with you, Kamal, if you don't mind? You know, being a visionary and educationist and, and serving for more than 30 years in the sector, how do you see the paradigm shift in education? Where, where, where during COVID-19 situation, where was the digitalization going in this? Is this going to be a game changer? So we can hear. Okay. There you go. Oh, you're not there. Yeah. Oh, there you are. Yeah. Good morning. Yeah. Okay. Very good morning to everybody. And thanks for joining us on this seminar. See, when we look, this is a very challenging time. Physical campus has changed into virtual campus. I remember in 1999 when we launched blended format with an American university in US. And on that time, I approached to the federal government Ministry of Higher Education to recognize this. The online education was always perceived as a lower than the campus physical education. Same thing happened with TQM, which is known uh, today as Hamdan Bin Rashid uh, Smart University. So the federal government was not recognizing online education. Now, COVID-19 has brought a mix back to us. It has challenges and a lot of opportunities in this. We see a lot of opportunities, that too, in a, especially in education sector. Now, we feel the future of education is going to be a blended format. It will be online and on-site. Two things have taken front seat. Tech and digitization has taken the front seat now. 
on 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 this now what you require you require a very highly talented trained faculty when you are changing from a physical mode to blended mode because the all the curriculum has to be rewritten all assessment has to be carried and then it should be a different format of total teaching it should be interesting interactive gamification of education so so many things will be happening and the most important is now education is not only uae or canada or uk and all whole education has come as a melting pot as a global education now our competition is with every institution in worldwide when we look into that and in this education especially covid 19 what i observe i remember in 86 i am an airlines man i plan a blended format of professional courses along with academic courses 20% was professional 80 was academics combination of that that idea was very successful now the professional courses used to help a student to get placement and academics help them to grow so but what i see now in after covid 19 skills are coming equal with the knowledge both of them will be balanced and and, and this is what is happening and in this covid 19 student demand will increase student will demand lot of thing and there will be no back bencher now bank bencher are over and the limit of the class will not be any limit i can teach to 500 student at a time in case if the federal government permits so i will stop here and then give a chance to others to talk well actually that's quite amazing because i like to see that the fact that it has kind of the playing field has kind of leveled out so there is the both sides of it so actually navin i was thinking about the same thing about that so Yeah, can you, how did you see the school adjust to the sudden migration to distance learning? Did, was there? Uh, it must have been quite the impact. But we, I like to see flexibility. So tell me, how did it go for you guys, or in or in general? So, firstly, thank you, and thank you, Mr. Puri, for those, uh, those great comments. Um, schools in general, in Dubai in particular, have done an absolutely fantastic job, in my view. um we had two weeks to adjust to this new normal um the spring break was brought forward giving us two weeks over a break to adjust to delivering lessons online now all schools barring i think one in dubai had not been set up to deliver curriculum online so we had to get all our teachers in and in essence use our technology platforms that were in place to deliver online now when it comes to arcadia we were fortunate that we we are actually an apple school uh, an apple distinguished school which means that you know not only are we recognized for innovation but we have a one to one apple program hence every single student carried carries an apple de- device an ipad therefore it became so devices for us which is one major challenge that schools faced devices in the hands of students uh was not a challenge unlike other schools in other parts of the world the second was we also had technology uh, our learning platforms in place thanks to us being an apple school so seesaw which is our our learning platform used for the the primary school years uh was something that we were already using to uh, as a learning management journal so we we began in the two week period to uh del- to start recording lessons that we could deliver asynchronously Uh, so so for us we had the tools in place now once you have to remember teachers have basically fundamentally not had a break now since winter right so spring break was all about getting these lessons recorded once the term started uh we began very quickly to get feedback from parents that children were missing the live component of lessons so 
every single year group from foundation stage all the way up, we began to introduce synchronous lessons. So a certain part of the day was live, live lessons where the teacher would be with the students in a live learning environment. It was, you know, not only was there tremendous pressure on parents because they had to, in essence, supervise, monitor, support, scaffold students during the asynchronous lessons, but also tremendous pressure on the teachers. In my view, uh, after the medical workers, the real heroes of this crisis of this time has been teachers. They have worked tirelessly to deliver um, a, an online learning. Yeah, no, it's been, it's been particularly tough uh, on uh, not only teachers, but when you look at society as a whole, right? Uh, students, uh, not all students have the privilege of having a device. And uh, you have to remember there are schools, even here in the UAE, there are parents, there are families where, who share a device. So I know of situations where children would be waiting at home for their father or mother to return from work so they could borrow their computer to, to, do their, to, to do their learning. And then if you have more than one child in the house, you'd have two, three, four children sharing one, one laptop. So this has been, this has been a, a, a really, really impactful time and not necessarily positively in terms of learning on, on, on students and children and families. It's been, it's been a real, real challenge, unlike, we've, unlike any that we've seen in our, in our lifetime. Thank you. Thank you very much. In fact, I think uh, I think there is a program out there, and I wish I remembered what the name was. That where people were donating devices to the schooling system, whether they had to be refurbished or or new. And I still think that's maybe something we should be looking at, maybe even with the business councils. And we'll have to speak about that because. Uh, these are tools that we need. We've needed them forever and we need them especially now. So Navin, thank you very much for that. Uh, Dr. Rami, uh, I was just wondering, you must have a, another twist on that with also with the big move of this uh, Canadian University of Dubai moving to City Walk. So you've had a couple of huge changes, all positive. But what do you think that, you know, for the, you know, we have the, a big future happening. How will teaching and learning change after COVID? Now you've got the change of the university to a new uh, wonderful premises, but where, what's going to happen after that? Uh, hi, Diana. Hi, everyone. Uh, hi. Thank you for, for the invite. Um, yes, it was challenging, as my colleagues have said. Um, we had to adapt within a week or two. Um, and I do congratulate everyone. I always say I'd, I'd, li I'd, I'd like to start with congratulating students. Uh, I will add to my uh, colleague, Mr. Naveen, in addition that teachers are heroes and of course the nurses and everyone who was on the front line, I, al I also think students were heroes because it was not easy for them as well to adapt. Uh, uh, it's, it was very challenging and uh, I always thank them for uh, being patient as well with us uh, for us to adapt and uh, get the ball running. So we, we adapted within a couple of weeks, uh, as Mr. Naveen said, we had to, uh, and I, I thank our infrastructure as well. I mean, we, uh, we found that we have a very strong infrastructure when it comes to technology that we were able to use right away. Uh, all our sessions were actually uh, live streaming starting from day one. We didn't do any recording. It was all live streaming. We were recording the live streaming session just for like a review later on by students. Um, the same thing with exams. That was a challenging, uh, uh, I will say, time uh, to run exams online. But uh, with technology, with our infrastructure, we were able to do that. So uh, from that perspective, yes, uh, thank, I thank everyone from students to staff to faculty for the great work they did. And that gave us confidence in moving forward now. Uh, we know that we are able to do it. We can, uh, and we are just waiting for the guidelines to see how we will uh, operate next uh, fall. Uh, but I think we are ready, whether blended, online, or uh, back to physical. Now, the, I will add to this two things, actually. I'll leave City Walk a little bit uh, later, but I will start with, the, uh, if you remember, Diana, we did virtual graduation in Burj Khalifa. Yeah, so, uh, that was amazing. <laughs> 
Exactly. We are very proud and we thank our Chancellor, Mr. Butis Aid Al Gandhi, and Dr. Karim Chali, our president and the board and the management of CUD to allow, uh, allow us to do such a, such a thing during this difficult time. And you don't uh, believe how much confidence it gives our students uh, to have their uh, photos and pictures uh, in, uh, across the tallest building in the world. Uh, Burj Khalifa, I think that we made history and we were covered everywhere. So that was something I, I honestly I believe uh, was appreciated by the society uh, during this difficult time to put our students on, on, uh, with virtual graduation on Burj Khalifa. Uh, in addition to this, we, we've been planning the expansion to City Walk before Corona has started and uh, the work did not stop. Now we are back to normal work and uh, we are hoping by September, as we promised uh, to our expansion to, to, to happen uh, in uh, City Walk and we will be running some classes and lectures if we are, of course, on site uh, from hopefully from City Walk. So CUD has been very proactive, been ready, confident uh, with what we've been doing and uh, we are ready to any type of uh, uh, teach learning uh, criteria we will have to follow next fall. Um, whether from C uh, City Walk, our original campus and or online. Fantastic. Um, Dr. Rami, are there, this is just a little bit not sort of off topic, are there any continuing education programs there for maybe for the more mature students that might want to, you know, to enhance their capabilities? They're, they should probably should get inv involved with UD or any of our other facilities. So are there uh, any uh, continuing ed education to improve what they have already know? Yeah, of course, we, we have our corporate training and continuing education department. And I think with the move to City Walk, that will even expand. I, I, I believe being in City Walk, being in downtown, uh, uh, we are trying to, uh, we are going to an innovative type of campus. So, uh, we will have like, we already have good connections and relation with uh, the society and the community and different industrial sectors. By doing this, we will uh, expand more on our corporate training, continue, continuing education for uh, mature students or people who want to learn a little bit more in certain topics. So uh, uh, we have built also a partnership uh, with Morgan and other like uh, uh, to deliver a lot of corporate training and continuing education courses. So, um, so yes, we are ready for this. And we've been always actually, I, I, I'm, I'm hoping to say we, we're being a pioneer in doing such a thing, yes. Fantastic. That, that, is, that is fantastic news. That's uh, very similar to our Canadian type of doing, type of education, of course, continuing yes, education exactly. program. Work and play and learn, as I call it. it well, is. thank you so much. Um, I, you know, but I think, uh, again, Dr. Camille, I, look, I was just thinking, you know, uh, it is, you could be teaching 500 students as you could be teaching 50 because with online learning, the blended type of learning, you're actually shortening the distance that someone could actually take the course from Canada, they could take the course from here, they could take a course from anywhere in the world. So this type of blended learning, how do you see the chances of comparison of traditional degrees with professional skilled certifications? Can we see more of diploma holders in the, in the future? Do you, do you think there's going to be the possibility of, I mean, this is very exciting. I, I'm very excited for people that maybe didn't have the chance to go to your amazing facilities, like, like physical facilities, all of them, Arcadia, CUD, Skyline. I think this is amazing because of the fact that they can actually one day hold a certificate diploma or, or whatever the case may be. So what, do you, what are your thoughts on that, Dr. Thanks. Uh, from 1990 onwards, we conduct certificate, diploma, associate degree, bachelor degree. Now, what we feel, I personally feel, in span of a one decade, the relevance of degrees will go down. And everybody, because human being is becoming very impatient, everybody will like to do a certain course. We will be enrolling student in future for lifetime where student will come study for one or two years, will go back to the industry, come back to us, sir, the skills and knowledge has become outdated. That is why we have an innovation lab, we have a future skills center in Skyline. When student is doing a particular degree, along with that, they do multiple certification like Microsoft, Cisco, ITA, from number of years, not now, from number of years, so that, because this helps, like, for example, in tourism, we have given 650 students to Emirate Airlines and to all tourism industry here. And then similar way, even in IT. 
So what I feel uh, as far as uh, the certification short courses are concerned, like uh, these, uh, people will be taking multiple qualification. Number two, as the gentleman has mentioned about walk uh, this thing, we have to have various branches. Like today, I give you example. Take example of Amazon and uh, uh, Alibaba. What they are doing? They started with the bricks. Uh, uh, they started with the clicks and switch over to bricks, and then they move to blended model. But when I look to open platform, today Microsoft is going to train 25 million students. Google is coming into education. There are 21 platforms are in India today. Similar number of platforms will be coming here. This is a big opportunity for the government to come on platforms and launch all these educational portals on that. Now, what we are planning as far as Skyline is concerned, market diversification, product diversification and what is happening the biggest challenge which all institution is going to face in higher education take example of usa canada uk australia today international student has nose dive now there is a plenty of opportunity from the middle east itself but depend on the government to issue visa to make it sure the hostels are safe secured etc so there is a there is a possibility the government will support that like we have hostel facility and we make it sure all are safe now sanitizations yesterday the guidelines have been announced by the government 118 guidelines once the campus will open so that means you can very well imagine what will happen to the cost of operation so, but as far as skyline is concerned we are using advanced tools we are making it branches are open we are because today the importance of faculty has increased you open iphone you open computer you open ipad student is flooded with information which information is to be converted into knowledge and which knowledge is to be applied here the role of mentor or a teacher is coming applied education is the buzzword for the future thank you very much I, I, I love your passion behind all this because this is really important. But you know, I was thinking, uh, Navin, would you be so kind? Because this actually ties into one of our questions. So, do you believe that that the physical schools will be uh, they, won't, they won't be required in the future? Or um, I mean, I mean, I love the fact that you guys are all Apple ready. I'm, I'm just just saying, okay. <laughs> Just saying, okay, but do yeah, really, we can just note each other, we text each other from here. But uh, um, I, I have some mixed feelings on that. I would like to know from a professional what your feelings are. So, pre COVID, uh, there was this constant debate and discussion on the relevance of physical schools, uh, particularly in the advent of companies such as Google. Uh, that we're delivering uh, fantastic content online. In my view, that debate uh, has now largely been uh, resolved. This crisis has shown us that physical schools are here to stay for the foreseeable future. So that was me cheering in the background. I'm going, yay! <laughs> and you're, you're not the I'm only parent. You're not the I only was doing for yeah. That's I was good. actually doing it for Dr. Rami too. He's back there, and he's we were all going yay. The the you know learning is what content is one thing, and I agree with uh, Mr. Mr. Puri that content is now being delivered by giants all over the world. But what the edtech world has failed to to master is the social and emotional connections that are built in school. In some areas globally, the nourishment that is provided in school, the care and, uh, that is provided in school so that parents can go to work and feel relaxed that their child is being well taken care of, uh, and also the safeguarding of, of children that, that a school provides, right? The, safeguard, the, the safeguarding umbrella. So it's, it's the, to me, this debate now, you know, uh, thanks to COVID, one of the few positive things that have come out of COVID 
is that physical campuses, whether it's universities or uh, schools, are here to stay, right? I think, I don't know uh, uh, about the gentleman on the line, but I have a son who's in university in the United States, and he's here right now, and he's, uh, he wants to go back. And him and his almost his entire class want to go back to school. They want to go back to physical school so they can make those so, uh, continue with those social connections. Which an online space, no matter how good it is, you know, we've all been on Zoom calls or on a Zoom call right now. But I'd rather be sitting across Dr. Rami and Mr. Puri and having a cup of coffee and chatting about the future of education rather than doing it on the Zoom. Call. Right, so, so Zoom, we will be doing. We'll, we will be hopefully doing that very soon, and we have all the witnesses that said heard you say that. So there you go. <laughs> and, and just to give you some context on numbers, because I'm sure there's there's a lot of numbers oriented people on the line. Yeah. The education market globally is I'm giving you approximate figures is roughly nine trillion dollars. Nine trillion. The ed tech side of that, which is growing. It's around about 200 to 250 billion at best. The rest is made up of physical spaces like the ones Dr. Rami and Mr. Puri and myself have created. You, in my view, this discussion, this debate is now finally resolved, right? No one can walk up to us anymore and say, oh, there's no future of physical campuses anymore. That, that discussion is over. Well, I'm happy. I am delighted beyond all means. And I'm sure there are a lot of people jumping for joy in the background or when they see this video and they're going, that's my man. Because we are, I think, in total accordance, all of us that are on the line today. And if not, if you're not in accordance with us, please just write in the chat box and we'll try to answer you. Uh, Dr. Rami, talking about physical schools. So we've got our new physical location of the CUD. That is very very exciting but you know let's say let's say we want to add something to the your little your little the new physical uh, location should uh, to help out should pay uh, should schools move to a paperless campus campus for staff and students permanently or what do you believe on that that's another aspect of the physical school i guess yeah um uh, so i i think again we agreed that there is a need for physical uh, because education is not only about academic, <clears throat> it also includes the social life, the interaction, and, and that part of building a, a, you know, a graduate eventually who, or a, a citizen who will serve his community. So now during the COVID situation, obviously uh, uh, as part of our safety measures that we have taken, we are trying to move to a paperless campus. Uh, so far we're very successful. And um, the, the thing is, the good thing about also uh, or the positive thing in, in a sense that, as I said, when we built confidence, uh, some of us did not ever thought we can teach online or ever thought we can be in Zoom meetings. Some, some of us never had this application even uh, or were aware of them. Now we are all aware of them. We know that we can do it and, uh, uh, and we, we had that confidence. So during COVID, we had to do everything paperless, obviously electronic. Now uh, things are opening up. Uh, uh, we said, and it's as, it, as long as it's a safety issue, why shouldn't we continue? As long as we did it for three, four months, we can keep doing it, uh, hopefully until the COVID situation is over. Uh, so that's why we are moving even within campus now physically uh, in a pay, uh, maintaining a paperless uh, kind of environment. Whether we should continue with this or not, honestly, I, I, it's like talking about should we go back to physical uh, campus? I think at one point you will have to. Uh, people will, there are still many people who like to read newspapers. They like to uh, uh, read books. They don't want to search it or read it online. So I, I, I think once this situation is controlled, uh, maybe we can go back to a paper type of environment. But from an environmental perspective, the more you push for paperless, even environmentally speaking, that's more positive. So if we can have a balance, now knowing that we can survive without papers, uh, because before it was like, can we really do it? Yes, we can. So you know what? This gives us this edge of knowledge that we can do it. Why don't we maintain it as much as we can? Even if it's not going to be 100%, let's make it 80 90%. By doing this, we're already saving on the, for the environment, sustainability, and at the same time, uh, uh, reducing all uh, risks, wherever they are, hopefully, after even COVID is controlled. And 
but give this chance for people who are still interested in classical type of reading. You know, like, so I, I, looking at the future, I will say, I'm sure it's going to tend to be more paperless than paper because we're getting used to it. But I don't know if we will be at 100% there or not. Well, that's good to know. And you're giving them the flexibility. I mean, exactly, I, exactly. I, mean, I, I like reading from my, you know, my iPad or from any type of things like that. But I do like the flipping yeah, of, of pages, course. even if yeah. they even if they did a really lovely job of flipping it in your iPad. It's lovely. It's got another feel. And going into in a library, a well-established library, it does still give you chills after all these years because you think of the history behind all the of books. Of course, of course. But, you know, I might be old school in some sense. And <laughs> um, uh, Camille, I actually have another uh, idea on that. Uh, and there's a, this has something to do with some of the questions that out there. So I'm reading the questions from the people, reading our, also our questions together here. So if you see me sneaking around, you know what I'm doing. So did you see any other major shifts? This ties in exactly with doc, what Dr. Rami was saying. Do you see any other major shifts or changes in the terms of conventional teaching methods? You, I'm sure you all have. So I'd like you all to answer this, but we'll start with Dr. We'll start with Camille. Sorry. Thank you. Okay. I agree with Mr. Naveen on uh, this part, whether it is schooling or, uh, or university uh, higher education. I use the word blended. All technology we will be using as a tools. As I mentioned in 99, we launched the blended format, one faculty sitting in US, one faculty sitting here, and then we used to call best of both the words 21 years back. Whereas the accredited agencies, they did not recognize these type of education. Today, there is a compulsion and they will be recognizing. Take example today, what is happening in US market? Ivy League institution, which has 64,000 students. Then you have tier two, tier three. Tier one will start picking up the waiting list because they will not have enough students. Tier two will survive and tier three has to close down. Because the reason is that there is a lot of impact. It is happening today in US, Australia, other places, etc. Because we all have to understand the pricing of the education is bound to reduce. It will, you cannot increase because machine learning and advanced tool of education will make education to be much cheaper than what it is today. So Blended format will survive. It will not be only physical. It will, uh, I agree absolutely. It will not be uh, uh, totally online. It has to be blended. But what is happening? Like Google has signed with the biggest schooling uh, board of India, CBSC. What they are doing? They are taking education everywhere. We run a charitable school. What we have done? We have put large screen size iPads on different villages and teaching them through that. So there are, the model is bound to be changed and applied education will take the front seat. Well, thank you. I can see that those are all aspects that are absolutely vital. Uh, 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 Naveen, you, is there something you'd like to add to that? Because I saw you in some terms of agreement there. So I could, I get to watch all your screens and, and um, I'm observing, I'm observing. Okay, so what would you like to say? No, I, I wholeheartedly agree with Mr. Puri. Uh, but I think there was one critical statement that he made, that this journey of blended learning started for him 21 years ago. So it's not that blended learning is something we've just discovered during COVID. Blended learning and technology in the classroom was there pre-COVID too. But so was the teacher and the teacher will be there or the professor post-COVID as well. Exactly. So, so technology, I think it's very, very important that we all recognize that technology, as Mr. Puri said, is a tool. It is not a substitute to teaching. Right? And I think that's the really, really important thing that COVID has made us realize that we, we you know, that the importance of the faculty member in front, in front of the class. Uh, yes, the tools, the improvement in tools during COVID has been unbelievable. The training on technology tools has been great. But 
some of these methods, I mean, all of these methods were there even prior, in Mr. Puri's case, you know, 21 years ago. Uh, now, Google, Google has made life very, very easy in terms of access, and they're continuing to do so. You know, the tie-up with the CBSE board, I think, is fantastic. Many, many children who, and students who would not normally get an education are getting an education thanks to organizations like Google. And I think that's really, really important, this idea of access. Uh, and which then in turn leads to equity and social mobility and the rest of it. But, uh, but I think the importance, again, you know, I stress on, on physical campuses, uh, such as uh, Skyline, such as Canadian University of Dubai uh, will remain. In fact, uh, I think this is gonna be a really, really interesting time because parents have a fear and rightly so in sending students back uh, or to the United States, the UK, India, uh, Australia, uh, Canada, and now these the local options. Now this is a real, real test for the local options because parents are looking at local options. So I think the market, uh, what we call the addressable market for local universities, universities that are physically based in Dubai uh, and the UAE, will will exponentially rise. Uh, my mic goes off. Uh, that is absolutely true because either because the maybe parents, you know, might not want to have their children travel overseas or whatever the cases may be. So I'm glad well, as long as the education is getting out to children of all age groups, even adults, this is the very the most important part. But actually, I was just thinking of something, uh, Dr. Rami. What is, is there any support out there for Canadian students and students who are planning to study in Canada for fall in 2020, 2021? I mean, because I know you work with a lot of amazing uh, structures actually there. Actually, one I think believe is Ryerson in Toronto, uh, Niagara College, which actually was, I've actually had the pleasure of seeing their campus. They have a great green economy courses, but if you have lots of universities to work with. Mm -hmm. So what, any thoughts on that? Uh, yes, um, <clears throat> as uh, Mr. Naveen said, uh, during this time, there is, there is a chance that many parents will be hesitant to send their uh, uh, children overseas, maybe. Uh, I mean, uh, uh, we've been hearing this, and uh, I, I can see that, yes, this concern is there. And uh, we, have been, we are a portal to Canadian education, uh, as you may know, Diana, and uh, we have the, all the relationship with different universities in Canada's MOUs and articulations for different programs, including Ryerson for Creative Industry, Brock for Communication, Niagara College, and many others. Um, so, uh, uh, University of New Brunswick, uh, Prince Edward Island, like uh, main universities uh, in Canada, obviously. Uh, so, this uh, this type of partnership, I think, will come and play more now uh, because of maybe that fear that some parents may have. They may want to postpone sending their uh, children to Canada, let's say, for a semester or a year until COVID situation is completely under control. So, CUD. Uh, uh, will rise here as an option for them. Uh, through our partnership, uh, we have obviously uh, a, a, a pers uh, a, a, an office specialized in uh, Canadian transfer uh, because that's that's been always the essence of CUD. Um, uh, parents may send their children here. They can start here. They may finish, graduate from CUD, and then continue. Their Many students, by the way, throughout the years, I've noticed uh, uh, and I've been in CD kind of since in inception of it. Uh, they come here with the idea that they want to transfer to Canada. Some of them, they enjoy uh, the campus and our life and our quality. They finish and then they go for graduate schools there. But there are also many others who will come and transfer in a year or two to Canada to one of our partners. So we have an office to help in that transfer and this office will be more active now. It's been active throughout the years and I think we will have to make it even more, maybe adding more uh, human resources there, because we will be working individually with every case. So every student who comes here with an interest to move to one of our partners in Canada, or not even a partner, uh, we will have a dedicated uh, human resource, like I will say, uh, an advisor who will help that uh, student uh, in what courses he should take here and what can be you know, transferred to Canada. We will be like, uh, communicating between the student and the Canadian partner. And we will help as much as we can to make his journey smooth as, po as smooth as possible if he decides to continue in Canada. So yes, uh, definitely uh, this, uh, this time um, uh, we, will be we are supporting students in general, as I said, as to transfer there. And during this time, we will add more of a support to them.
So we, hopefully we will be an option for the ones who are interested to go back uh, to continue in Canada. Or I will say even there is the opposite. There are students who were studying in the US and Canada and they are back now to UAE and uh, they may not able to go back to continue. So they may use also one of the local colleges here or universities, including CUD, as, uh, as also an option to start uh, to continue here for a term. And then maybe hopefully by next spring or next year, they can go back and continue in their uh, uh, main university where they have started in. Well, thank you very much. I love the fact that you, what you mentioned is that all of your, all of your structures seem very well tailor-made to the, the students' needs. So it's not a one size fits all type of situation. So I'm really, really happy to hear that because I'm sure it's like Skyline or Arcadia or, or the university itself, the Canadian University of Dubai. It's lovely to know, let's say, there might be a student from Canada and for some reason, maybe they're even looking to move maybe in a year from now to Dubai. They might even want to start their studies already with you and continue on, which I, I'm really excited to know of all the online yeah. programs that will facilitate many ways. Um, actually, so there's a few questions. So I'm just going to, because one actually ties into what you actually were saying, uh, 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 Rami. We've got, Dr. Rami, we've got here, uh, how many students are you expecting approximately CityWalk campus when you actually open? And that was from Pamela. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, we are uh, gradually expanding to City Walk, so hopefully uh, uh, we will be maybe, um, I, I think we will be running some courses between the old campus and the new campus by September, and then hopefully slowly we will add more and more to City Walk. So CUD has been always no, trying to be like a small downtown type of campus, and that's what actually make our university popular when it comes even to student community and student life and engagement. So uh, in addition to the uh, good academic quality, obviously, the uh, uh, Canadian standards and, of course, uh, reflecting on uh, UAE Ministry of Education high standards. So um, uh, uh, I will say I, I don't have a number to give now. It's more strategic mm -hmm. numbers, but we're trying always to be a campus of 3,000 students maybe. Now, I don't know with the expansion if we are planning to grow more than this or we will keep it more small in a smaller version. But I think that's a number I can give. But as I said, don't quote me on this number. Things may change. Well, <laughs> I, pr I promise we won't quote you on this number yeah. because we know we know the quality of It's a strategic number, your... as you know. Yeah. That's right. And it, it's a number that's like very, they, in Italian, it's very, it has a great sound to it. So we ah, love okay, it. That's good. Okay. <laughs> Okay, so, uh, but uh, if it, uh, all of, the, like you said, the numbers maybe don't count because it's the quality of education, exactly. the quality uh, exactly. that you, all, all your structures have given. So, um, um, Norman, would you be so kind, uh, Gina, you might want to give a little bit more information, sorry, and then, I'm, and then we'll get to more questions, but I think, I think people maybe don't know the range maybe of what your schooling does. We've got wee ones, we've got everybody because we hear Apple. I mean, I was the other day, I, I believe I was downtown. I don't remember where I was. There's this little cute little child. She's like two years old. I think she was much more device friendly than most adults because she was just, so tell me what, you, what you've got going on there. So Arcadia is a school that started, our first school started in 2016 in the Jumeirah Village Triangle area. And it was started by our founder, Mr. Mohan Balrani, uh, who had a vision to create a school that stood for just more, much more than just traditional education. Um, he, he, was, he was and is an avid believer in the British uh, primary and secondary schooling model curriculum. And uh, we set up, as I said, in the Jumeirah Village Triangle area, and, he, and we stood for uh, happiness more than anything else and student well-being. And that's how the name Arcadia came about. If you look at the name of Arcadia, Arcadia is an area in Greece. But when the Romans left uh, Europe, when the Roman Empire fell, uh, people around Arcadia was, was existing, and when people went into Arcadia, they were surprised that this, despite all the wars and all the violence that was there at that time, Arcadia had retained its simplicity and, its, and the people of Arcadia were happy. And that's how our chairman, Mr. Mohan Valrani, named
I'm not sure if I, I, I see uh, I see Nevin blocked about. I think he must be so happy. Oh, there you are. Are you back? Are you back? Oh, we love technology. So I think uh, oh I think what we're going to do. He's probably going to come back online, but I think we could do the exact same thing with you, Camille. Uh, 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 yeah. Kamal, could you be so kind? Maybe you can tell us a little bit about too at this point as well. Yeah. What sure. Skyline is doing. So he's yeah, obviously sure. sounds like the grooming amazing. Oh, you are back. We missed you. We missed you. <laughs> you told me to. At one point, I I got thrown out. But uh, no, we would never do that. That was I would never do that. <laughs> uh, yeah, but, uh, uh, you know, Arcadia again stood for well-being. It's it stands for entrepreneurship and developing the entrepreneurial okay. mindset, which has served our chairman so well over the years. So when, when you ask people, you know, what is Arcadia known for? I'll be very surprised if the word entrepreneurship doesn't come up. And it's really based on us founding our own program, which is called the Junior MBA program, a program that I teach uh, at the school. And it's for, for students as young as seven years old learning entrepreneurship skills. We have nine-year-olds creating financial models on spreadsheets. So, so again, you know, entrepreneurship is another big one. And the third and probably the most important is this idea of mindset. Um, you know, it's very, very, uh, particularly as, you, as we look at how education used to be delivered, we, uh, students end up having this fixed mindset thanks to exam results, entrance requirements, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, we are a school that promotes the growth mindset, which is really about facing your failures, talking about them, and really asking yourself the question, how do, how do I learn from the experience that I've just been through? How, how have I grown as a person, as a student? And we apply this all throughout the school to our staff, our teachers, our students, this idea of having a growth mindset, of constantly saying, look, I've just been through this experience. We can call it a failure. We can call it what we want, but what did I really learn from this experience? And how would I do things differently the next time around, right? So, so this, this idea of mindset is so critical to the education Arcadia delivers. Of course, underlying all this is the, the academics and the ability to, to uh, meet our students and meet and exceed our students' aspirations. Many students have aspirations to go on to university, good, great universities like, uh, like CUD and Skyline. Many, many students have aspirations to do other things as they go on, as this whole idea of post-schooling changes, as Mr. Puri had highlighted. And it really is our job as Arcadia to, to meet those aspirations. So we are constantly asking our students, you know, what are your goals? Assisting them, guiding them, and saying, look, and then tracking them as they go through their journey, particularly in secondary school. Well, that is fantastic. Yeah. I think that type of mindset could be applied to almost everything that we're doing right now, even with the COVID-19. I, I, we're getting closer to the end, but I would like to, uh, uh, Camille and Dr. Rami. First, Camille, would you like to give us a little bit more, yeah. whatever sure. you'd like to give us a little bit more information, yeah. information about the school? We'd love to hear it. 99 onwards, we have established collaboration worldwide in Canada with Concordia, with Seneca, with Niagara, and in US with various university, UK, Australia, etc. And collaboration is on the basis of three factors. One is faculty exchange. Second is uh, uh, on student exchange. It could be course by course or consolidated transfer. And third is research. Now research platform, uh, which is coming up ours to make it sure that we bring all the brains together. Now from last uh, 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 one month, we are receiving a lot of calls coming from even Ivy League institution to move and they want to do collaboration because what is happening in the world, when mega trend of, uh, of uh, these all, uh, uh, Facebook, Microsoft, other companies are coming into that, there, there will be tripod agreement. One is a technology company, second is a content producing company, and third is a brand equity. 
Since we have a 30 years brand, we also established another campus in Nigeria from last two years. We have a 250 acre land. We have 40 acre land here for the campus. Where I see the future of a higher education, number one, consolidation. Number two, quality will win. Number three, education, short courses will become like e-commerce. People, Amazon will be selling short courses. Others will be selling short courses. So BRICS importance will be there, but it will reduce. Whereas a click importance will increase. Very important for us to convince the government to, to make a platform where academia, corporates, and government should be together to design the strategy. Thank you. Thank you very much. Again, your, your knowledge and your passion is quite striking. Um, uh, and as, Dr. Rami, would you like to add some other things to these comments? Because this, I think this is a real vital tie-up. And uh, just for you know, participants, if you have asked other questions, we are, I'm hoping to have these two, uh, these three wonderful gentlemen back again for another education thing in a few months so that we can see what the turns and twists have been. But, and if you have any questions, I'll make sure they'll get back to you. But maybe you'd like to add some things because we're tying up. Uh, yeah, from my side, I just support what my colleagues have said. And uh, uh, as I said, based on the guidelines of September, we will be ready, whether blended uh, online or on site, physical. Uh, I'm hoping for uh, more interaction, as uh, Mr. Naveen said, like in, in the uh, uh, coming cl close future or near future. Um, I just want to also highlight that CUD has been um, uh, uh, very involved with the society during this difficult time uh, through running online uh, uh, sessions, uh, seminars, uh, psychological, even uh, how to, uh, to manage anxiety and mental stress during this time. We did it through our professors in psychology. Uh, we, ran, we ran so many seminars that people were following, virtual open houses. And I want to highlight uh, a big thing that honestly CUD has done uh, for the community during this time where they uh, uh, extended a financial relief for COVID. Uh, uh, due, for, uh, due to COVID situation for all parents, uh, uh, for, for current and new students, uh, since starting summer, leading to the fall with 30%, uh, uh, I would say, fee reduction, in addition to, to top it up with the scholarship up to 60%. So I, I, uh, I, I wanted to take this chance to highlight that initiative that the management and the board of CUD has taken as part of their CSR uh, to support the community. Um, again, Diana, thank you so much for the invite, and I hope I can, we can see you and see my colleagues in another round, but this time physically. Uh over a I, 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 or we could, or we could, or we can do the combination of both because we can have physical blend and we can it, blend course. it. With, yes. Blend it. Our our new go-to word: blending. We're blending. We're being, yeah. you know, very flexible in this. Um, I actually do want to. Uh, this is our give back. As you know, the, the uh, CBC Dubai, this is our give back. We're creating these webinars. I know maybe we're all webinared to death, okay? But we are creating these webinars as our give back to, to everyone because this is the time to do so. If there's any other ways, we could, might be able to create a, a drive for devices or something like that. Please get to us, okay? We also have where we're trying to do internship programs, please contact us. I will, I will cold call anyone. You guys should know me already by now from the last little 45 minutes. Uh, Navin, I think you wrote something. You did like to say some other things and we're, we're always happy to hear because uh, no, I we mean, got just, this. <laughs> uh, just some thank yous. Uh, so firstly, I'd like to thank uh, someone who's not on the line, which is Mr. Nitin Puri, Mr. Kamal. <laughs> Again, okay. he got freeze. Uh, oh, he's he got frozen. Freeze. I, I don't know what it is. He just has, you know, yeah, this I will, technology. <laughs> I, will, I, well, I will take. Naveen's father is a very close friend of mine, Mr. Mohan Agarbrani. Right. A great person who has done a great job in various fields. Skyline uh, International Group, we have a various, we have a Canada presence from 2000 onwards in FMB uh, and others. I see enormous opportunity for Canadians now, which we are working on, fintech, medtech, as well as in agritech. These are the areas where U.S. is reluctant. Sorry, he has come back. U.S. is reluctant, and this business can be shipped to this area. 
Go ahead, please. Yeah, I'm not sure. We have, we have, we have uh, tag team wrestling here. It's okay. It's your turn. Go. <laughs> Firstly, a thank you to Mr. Nitin, uh, Mr. Kamal's dynamic son, who invited me to this, uh, this seminar, this webinar. Uh, uh, I, I was expecting to see him here, but his more dynamic father is on the line. So, uh, <laughs> so his absence is not being felt, but a massive thank you to him. I also want to thank um, the Canadian Business Council and particularly Canada. Uh, we have in our school installed uh, ultraviolet technology right now in our air conditioning duct systems and they are entirely yeah. from Canada. We've actually signed a contract with a company called Sanuvox in Canada. Um, and also, you know, Canada is, one of, is, is a country that in many ways is a model society and the kind that we look at building in Arcadia. One of the things that we've done in Arcadia is we've extended out uh, the school day and what is typically extracurricular is, is curricular at Arcadia. So parents don't have to worry about dropping off and picking up. And also at the primary school, we have no homework. So when you pick up your child and take them home, you have your child. They're not working till eight or nine o'clock. They don't have to be on a device. Uh, and you can truly enjoy family time. And again, that's, I think, what Canada stands for, this whole idea of well-being and developing this, this model society. So big thank you to Canada. Big thank you to Canadian business. You really, really set the benchmark. And I look forward to, to working with you in the, in the days, months, and years ahead. Likewise. Well, uh, we are totally flattered. And I think that, uh, thank you for saying that, just Canada, I think it's just a worldwide type of thing. And talking about heroes, you mentioned the other people, but you gentlemen here and all your staff are heroes too. Thank you for working so hard behind the scenes to make sure that our futures are safe, which are our children. So thank you so much. I wish you well, and I would love to have you all back really soon. Take good care of yourself Thank and you. congratulations. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Take care. Thank I wish you. I could hug you, but Take we care. can't. We'll do it next time. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Take care. Bye. Bye. Thank Bye. you everyone for attending. Bye. 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 Bye.